Okay, hello. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to be going over um, the starting point for texturing. I'm going to take it nice and slow because I know texturing can be kind of a, a very difficult process to learn um, in comparison to a lot of the other aspects of Max. Um, yeah, so I'm going to spread this out. I'm going to spread it over at least three tutorials um, to make sure you kind of get it. Um, I'm going to be teaching the peel method for texturing. Um, there are different methods. Some people use pout. Uh, some people, I'm, I'm sure, use other methods as well. Um, you know, include, including the projections. Um, you know, I'm, I use peel. I prefer it. It's a good method, um, and that's why you're here. You're here to learn peel. So, um, there will be files provided for this tutorial. Um, obviously, it's handy lot. Then it's on Blackboard. Um, otherwise, uh, if you're not, then that's it, it. Well, the files will be linked through some media site. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Um, uh, I'll put it in the comments below, uh, in the video description, shall I say? Um, anyway, so on with this. Uh, I've got a different array of objects. This is what I want to look at first. It's just how best to uh, map them using. Um, you know, peel um, and creating seams, uh, you know, in order to make them flat, ready for texturing. Uh, you might wonder why there's three boxes. <laughs> there's three different methods for doing that. Um, so I'll show you that. Depends on it. Really depends on the object that you're trying to model. But really, by going through these, you should have covered most um, most of the types of objects that you're likely to see. Um, there will still be some strange ones and you'll still have to think on your feet with some of your models in the future but you know, for the most part uh, the same techniques that apply to this will obviously apply elsewhere um, on your own models um, which would be obviously far more sophisticated than this okay so we'll start uh, we'll start by applying the texture to the model now I've provided you where the texture looks like this. It's just got a load of different images uh, slapped on into this little 1024 by 1024 square um, texture. And I'm not going to go into uh, you know layout and uh, um, you know resolution in this video. Uh, that's something I'm going to do in the following steps to come. Um, just in in this tutorial alone, all we're going to look at is just arrangement, uh, how to use peel and how to uh, basically apply a texture. That's that's all we're doing in this tutorial. Um, so obviously we've got different methods here. We've got the dice, we've got you know, what looks like a crate and a box and you know these are quite obviously cylindrical and you know uh, spherical. So these are all things that we're going to apply um, as we go on. Okay so if I go in to here I go to this little box here, where this will be our starting point. If we want to bring up the material editor, we go to either here, material editor, click that, or alternatively, you press M on your keyboard, and that will also bring it up if you're a bit of a sh uh, shortcut buffing. And um, you'll notice that in here, I already have two textures. Okay, uh, if I haven't took them out for your model, which I probably haven't then uh, you can just ignore them for now, they're for a different tutorial um, which I'll show you um, but obviously if you started a new file and you're just creating your boxes and whatnot, um, then everything in here will be blank it will all look like this if you have um, 3D Studio Max design then it might say arc and design or something down here instead of standard um, if you tap that Let's say if you tap on arc and design you'll get these options just double click on standard and that will bring you back to this which obviously look familiar I don't know why it does that in design but it does um, anyway so obviously you can work from the first slot if there's nothing there otherwise choose the third slot in and we're going to create our material within here now first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in our colour map and this is our colour map this is the only texture we're going to look at in this case and um, colour map being 
properly called a diffuse, a diffuse texture. That's the proper vocabulary for it. Um, so we're going to go to the diffuse channel here. And there's a little button next to it. Press that. It'll give you a big list of options. Now, that, yeah, we're going to go through a few of these. We're going to use composite at some point. We're going to use normal bump. Um, you know, we'll probably even use checker as well. Um, but for now, all we're going to use is bitmap. Okay. Now we've got to root out our images. Okay. So wherever you stored them, now I've got to find mine. Which is the fun part. It's gone the wrong way. There it is. Okay. Mm, doing me there, yeah. Okay, so there'll be a file called MP um, underscore demo underscore peel. Okay, a bit of a silly name, I know, but what the hell? Um, if we open that up, you'll notice that it's a TGA. That's kind of important. Um, I should point that out. You'll never bring a PSD in because it Max hates them, and they won't run in game because they're too uh, they're too high in memory. Um, TGA is a lossless format, so it means that it can be compressed down just like a JPEG in a sense, not quite as good as a JPEG, um, but it can be compressed down at a higher resolution. Um, it doesn't lose any data. Um, obviously, for those of you at Henley, you'd have done lossy and lossless um, you know, pretty early on in the course. You should have done. <laughs> if you haven't, then uh, I need to have words. Um, but uh, yeah, so lossless format is generally used in the industry. I've used TGAs, I've used uh, PNGs, even way that was PNGs, and um, that was kind of a nice experience. But um, generally speaking, on most current gen engines and probably next gen engines, TGAs will be the main format used. Um, so we're going to choose that, open. Right, now with our object selected, if we want to apply this, we have to press this little button here. Press that, and it, when we press that, it's going to go grey, and we're going to be disappointed because we don't see anything happen. Um, apart from it's obviously gone from red to grey. There's one other thing we've got to do, and it's show shaded material in viewport. If we tick that, it will then show us our material. Otherwise, it won't appear. And you, it's unbelievable how many people that sort of stomps each and every year. Um, if you're on another thing, if you're on design, sometimes there's a fault um, where real use real world scale comes on, and it will say 0 0.48. And um, you want to turn that off and change it to one for this to work properly. Once again, I do not know why it does that. It just does. Um, anyway, hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> if it all looks like this, then that's fine. The text is on there. Um, we can then close this. Right. Now, in order to edit the UVs of this, okay, so we can create our texture map, um, we have to first go to the modifier. So the modifier is called Unwrap UVW. Tap that. And this is our editor. So if we press here, we can see the editor. Now, um, at the moment, there's not really much going on, not much to look at, but there's this green border, and that is our seam lines. So that means that um, at this current point in time, um, each one of these is a separate polygon. It's not. There's none that have been stitched together. And when I stitch together, I'll show you shortly, but it just means that I can go to face down here, and notice that I've got edge and vertex to us, sim similar really to when you're in Edible Poly. If you select that, you can see that I can move it off, and that's that polygon there. And if I move it, you can see that it moves it around. Okay? So if I turn on the texture, we're going up here so I can see it in here. Okay? You'll notice that moving it outside there, it just goes on and on forever. Now, at this point in time, I'm not going to explain this too much, um, but for seamless textures, which we will cover, um, this is entirely relevant. So I won't show you how to see them, but this actually tiles forever and ever and ever and ever. And you can select the option that shows it, but I don't want to distract too much. Um, 
obviously if you're just doing a, a unique object uh, and you don't need a seamless texture that goes on and on forever then you know you're only ever going to use what's called 0 to 1 and that's the coordinate between here and here and here and here on both x and y okay or u and v okay so that's all there is to that now obviously if we wanted to texture this as a dice what we could do is use the scale tool okay or we but I'd like to point out that we have move, rotate, and scale, and the shortcuts are exactly the same as they are normally. So W move, uh, E rotate, and R is scale. If we move that onto three, slightly scale it down a little bit, you know, we could go around and do the whole model like that, and that would be pretty quick probably, uh, because I'm trying to demonstrate peel. Um, it wouldn't be practical so I'll show you the uh, other way this won't work for everything it works for this but it won't work for everything um, sometimes you'll want these to be connected and not part and that is where peel would be more useful to you um, in this case I think it kind of it would work with the dies you get away with it it wouldn't be too much of a problem um, you can see what you have selected by the way by this little yellow line here see if I select like that you can see that it's got the little yellow dot and that's how you can kind of work it out okay I'm gonna delete that though I'm gonna go back right click delete I'm gonna reapply that uh, unwrap modifier I'm gonna open UV again except this time what I'm trying to achieve okay if I go on here grab my Wacom pen uh, what I'm trying to achieve is a net so you kind of have to think of this a bit like um, paper craft that's probably the best way to describe it um, you're taking a 3D object as it's a paper craft in reverse I should point out you'd be like taking uh, a paper craft model and unfolding it back out to a net um, that's kind of what we're doing here you know, we're going to take this 3D object and we're going to work out why it's jumped like that we're going to work out how it can be cut to form this shape. Obviously, that cross. It's a very shoddy cross that I've drawn there, but yeah. And we'd, you know, if this was a paper craft model, obviously we'd have tabs, you know, and it would say cuts here, you know, scissors cut there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's actually what we kind of have to do. We have to create seam lines. And which it would be if it was a paper craft model where you would cut along the model. Okay, so you know, dot, 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 cut along here. On the model itself, right, on the model itself, this is done by taking the edges and converting them to, as I said, seam lines. And this is more or less like having the dashed lines you get on paper craft that say, cut here, you know, do this here. Um, so let's let's let me demonstrate it. Okay, if we go to edge mode, so right click edge or alternatively over here, and I'm just going to select these edges. So holding control, if you can't remember, allows you to multiple select, but you should know that by now. Okay, and because we want this, if we go back, because we want this to flare out. So let's presume that this is top, this is bottom. Okay. This is the front of the box, or the dice, and this would be the rear of the dice, so let's say rear, and left, and right. That will do. Okay, so let's presume that's the top. That means it's going to have to flare out. So, in order for it to do that, there's got to be a split along this line and this line, and the same all the way around. So, on our model, that's these lines right here, which is why I've selected them. Okay, now we've also got to work out you know, where the other splits are. So we know that on the front one here, right, we want this to continue down with the bottom one selected as well, connected to it. So that means that we don't want to cut this off, we want to keep 
uh, that connected, but we want seam lines around the rest of it. So to explain that, because I realised that wasn't entirely clear. All right, let's presume this is, well, we've got the front here, we can see there. So this is the front of the model. So we know the bottom is there. So in order for it to cut away, but still stay connected, right, what we have to kind of do is say, okay, take that one there, that one there, that one there, all right, and that will cut around that there. Now at this point, that's all the seams highlighted, but you can still see the old seams are still on it, so we have to get rid of them first. And the way we do that is by pressing reset peel. And that gets rid of them. Right? So I probably should have done that first. That was stupid of me. <laughs> I apologize for that. It is very late at night. It is currently uh, half two and getting later and later. Um, but anyway, look, I can quickly select them again. So going around, it probably doesn't hurt to recap it anyway. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that one there, that one there that one there. Right. So this in theory should flare out. These should fly out like that. That one should fly out because you see we've cut it there. And this one should fly out but with this one underneath connected as well because we haven't put a seam line here. See? There we go. It's white not red. Now to convert it to a seam line because at the moment it's just edges selected we have to go to convert edge selection to seams. That makes it blue. And while I'm there, I'd like to point out there is other ways of doing this as well. You can do it point to point. I just find this way it gives me a little bit more control. And um, you can do this as well, where you can actually select on. If I go like that, you can actually select on or deselect them by holding Alt. So if you make a mistake, that's the one to go to. When they've turned blue, that means they're now ready to be uh, peeled, essentially. So if we go here, peel mode, press that, and there you go. You can see there, if I turn that off, make it a little bit clearer, it's gone into the cross, just as we wanted, just as it is on there. And if you turn peel mode off, and that's important, because if you try and move it like this, you'll notice it does this stupid thing, which is actually something really quite cool, but it's something for another day. Um, so we'll go off that, turn peel off, um, if you get them stuck on afterwards, just go down here and press that and they will disappear, okay, um, they're not disappearing right now, but they, they bloody well, there we go, just press peel again, that seems to do it, right, okay, so we've got that, if we rotate that round, and if we wanted to rotate that round relatively accurately, we could always use the angle snap and do it. There we go, perfectly. Okay, so now we've got that, switch the texture back on, turn that back on there, and we can scale this down. Okay, if your pivot ever moves like that and it sort of does this sort of weird offset thing, just press that and it'll snap it back to the centre, see, like so. Let's move that into the middle there, and then scale it up so we roughly get it about right. A little bit more down. And I think that is roughly about it. Yep, that'll do the trick. So on the model, okay, we can see that it is now on there. Okay, it probably needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Some of these lines could be tidied up, but that is generally it. Once you're done, right click, collapse all, and yes, and that is important that you do that. If you don't do that, it will not save your UVs. Um, you know, just don't build them up, don't stack them by creating multiple ones. De you know, don't delete them either. Um, just collapse them, and then that saves the data. Then save your file afterwards to confirm it. So there we go, we've got one dice using one method appeal. Obviously, there are some other principles as well. If we go back into Material Editor and we apply it to the second one, 
Okay, and we want to uh, go to unwrap again. Okay, now this time, this time, I'm not going to use unwrap. Uh, I'm not going to use peel, sorry. I just wanted to demonstrate a way of being efficient. Um, now, you might have done it like this. You might have done it like the peel. Uh, and you might have done it for a box instead. Now, I've got all these boxes spread out. So let's drag that off so we get a nice clean view. Okay, I've got all these spread out, the different sides. So that's the side of the box, that's the bottom of the box, and that's the top of the box. Now, I've only got those three views. And the reason is, is because to save texture space, wherever possible, you want to reuse sides of the mesh. Obviously, if you've got something that requires a unique side, then do so. But with a generic thing like a box, you know, you could save a lot of memory. And with games sort of like GTA, where you've got lots and lots of trash and stuff like that, and which is sometimes the project that I do. I'm not doing with uh, you guys this year, um, but uh, you have really have to think about, um, you know, reusing texture space, so not to use up too much memory. Because the more memory you use, um, the slower the FPS is. So an FPS is everything. So if we use the same side on all of them, select that, keep. Sort of put it on top because it's this is what I mean. It's important to know that you can actually overlay UVs on top of each other for efficiency reasons. Okay, let's keep going. I think is that one? No, it's not. So I'll just roughly plunk it on. That's near enough. And the last one. There. Ah, pivot moved again. There we go. There we go. Okay, and this is the top, so I know this one goes on here. Scale that down. And this one goes on the bottom, which might not be seen. I mean, you know, if it's a static model, you might just delete the bottom, but I guess it's more and more a trend to make everything dynamic so you could shoot it or bump into it and it will move. Um, so within like games like GTA 5 and stuff like that, um, we, you know, we get into a point where we can afford to do that sort of stuff on such small assets. There we go, anyway. So that. If I collapse that again now, right click, collapse all, yes, that would be a box. Okay, doesn't need to be that complicated, that was just with three small textures, that's it. Same one, overlay. Because you only like need to see uh, one side of the box, or yeah, perhaps two, uh, you get away really with doing this, because you only ever see one side at a time. So quite often I'll have a different side, and you know, just have uh, I'll have an extra one to sort of do some variants. Um, you know, so I'll have a different one on this side, and I'll have a different one on this side. Um, you know, they'll be well, they'll be exactly the same across like that. So you know, if you're looking at an angle like that, you're only ever going to see, you know, you're never going to see the duplicates. Anyway, so. That's that. With this one, with the crate, it's uh, obviously just pointing out what we put on the material. Screen burn. This one's just pointing out something very similar. So, once again, it's a case of if you can save memory, do. Um, I'm just going to select them all in this case. Scale them down. And move it in and that does the trick fine if you need to rotate them at all or anything like that obviously you've got the rotate tool um, but you've also got other things up here as well that you need to look at like mirror horizontal I believe there's a tool for that there as well so you can mirror them you know, flip them around if I actually do that you can see that mirrors the UVs if you hold left click down you've got vertical mirrors as well that's worth noting You've got free transform mode there. 
um, but obviously you've got the normal ones there as well. Okay, so that's that's worth knowing. Um, that was a very quick one. I'm just trying to reiterate really because a lot of people forget about it that you can overlay stuff and it does save a lot of space. Uh, okay, now this one, the cylinder. Right, so by default, if we apply the modifier again, and generally I do cylinders the same way each and every time. Um, it comes obviously with the same UVs straight from the off, which is great. You know, that is pretty much done. Right, it is pretty much done. Um, if you needed to manually do it, the sort of kind of point out if you did the seam lines, so um, they went all the way around the top and one down and all the way around the bottom so you end up with this then that's how it's achieved because there will be times I guarantee it and um, when you you've cut into your model your UVs will go completely skew and you have to do this manually in fact it's guaranteed to happen um, a cylinder is pretty much you know next to a box the most common ones that I have to map out using peel um, but luckily it's quite easy to do if you just think about it and by putting that seam there obviously that makes it so it's open ended on the end here which turn that off which allows it to be split so it kind of unfolds itself like if you cut a toilet paper um, you yeah, know right or a toilet roll thing <laughs> you know what I mean um, right down the middle there you could flatten it out and that's the same thing. Um, these two end pieces then are just treated as separate bits of geometry. Like so. And obviously, if we apply a texture to it, so I'm going to collapse that because you can't apply a texture to it while you've got the, mod uh, the modifier on. We apply that texture. We apply the modifier. Okay. That on there. Face and turn that on so it selects the whole object. Scale it into place, and you're going to need to tweak it a little bit. Now, one other thing you can do is if you're on scale mode, if you hold shift, then that will allow you to do it vertically or do it horizontally. Um, you can also do that in here as well by holding down left click. That's kind of worth knowing if you need a great level of control. Okay, and let's grab those two as well. Oops, left it on that uniform scale. There we go. Fail. Okay. That one too. Done. So top of bottom of the barrel, all in place. Okay. And there is a nasty little seam there, and this is where <laughs> this is something else that I'm going to talk to you about. Um, it's seam lines and you want to kind of make the seam lines as sort of discreet as possible you, you don't obviously want them to be um, really obvious on something like this it's hard to kind of hide it you won't really get away with it um, but I'm going to use this to do it because it's annoying me a little bit there we go, got rid of it but on some models you can hide it um, so, for example, if it was character, the seam lines would appear underneath the arm or, you know, somewhere where basically you're not going to see it. In fact, the best one to kind of demonstrate this is actually the torus over here. This one's kind of a really good one because, you know, if I don't want the seam lines to be seen, um, you know, possibly, depending on where it's going to be seen from, let's say it was a donut, the best place for the seams would be on the bottom. You wouldn't see that. I think that's mostly the best place to put it. Um, yeah, or I could put it on the inside of here as well. Um, but I'll kind of go into that a bit more in a minute when I get to that one. Um, spherical. 
Okay, so wrap that. Now obviously by default it does something magical <laughs> and it's uh, it's already quite nicely laid out and um, it will have done it and to be honest I don't think you really entirely need to deviate from this sort of setup. Um, if you kind of mess up at some point and this is something I was getting to um, and you you know you need to do a very quick spherical one like this and you can't bother to your peel and I totally understand projection is the best one to use for that so you will see there's a cylindrical one there is a spherical one down here there's even a box one that does it for all the edges so you could do that in two seconds absolutely two seconds um, but I'm trying to get you to get used to this that's why I wasn't necessarily going to show you it but there we go so if you if I show you that projection one just to demonstrate it um, you can see on it there's a green line there this obviously shows us where the seam line actually is and as you can see it creates well, the same sort of effect except it is fused at the top which I thought it would split it, but apparently hasn't but no matter you know that's one of the way of doing it um, yeah and I might as well demonstrate the cylindrical one at this point so you can see it's the same sort of thing and you've got a plane, and you've got a box. Okay. So yeah, I'm glad I demonstrated that. Um, also worth pointing out, if you do need to do a plane one at all, just something flat, then you can also change its direction here. You can do that for any of them. Okay. They will come in useful. These will come in useful at some point, I'm sure. Um, I do use them occasionally. But since I'm using peel, it's very rare now that I do use them. Okay, so that one should already be ready to kind of slap our world on. And we should be able to just go in and kind of scale it down. Now, because of the way this is set up at the top, there is going to be a nasty seam in the north and south pole, but it's something that can't be avoided at this point it would take a lot of effort to avoid it and it's something that you know in your second year is uh, it's something that we will look at more much more carefully trying to reduce the amount of seams in place there we go done to collapse that done you can kind of see the seams a bit up there but uh, generally speaking, you know, you can get away with it. There's the earth. Yay! Now, most of the time, you've seen in my other tutorial, that I use relax on cubes to make spherical objects for you know, more organic models, because it gives you a better level of control than using something like this. Um, in order to map these, you definitely need to use peel. Um, so I'm going to show you the way to do it. Um, if we go in, there we go, to reset the peel, do it first this time, I remembered this time. Um, generally speaking, if I was to imagine this was a head, okay, it was a very blocky head, I'll give it that. But if it was a head, um, like, you know, you get the mobile ones quite blocky, aren't they? Then, because we want it to be, if you remember what I said, we want the seam to be hidden we put it where it's less likely to be seen so in this case at the back of the head because most of the time you would look at the face of the character right and we want it to stretch underneath right to the middle point the same on top now, at this point if we were to peel this it wouldn't work like if i convert that and just do peel it freaks out it doesn't really do anything right that's because it can't right we have to give it a little bit more. So if we make, create a split there, create a split there, and this is exactly how I do it when I do a character. Do the seams again. So we've now got this T-like shape on either end. Peel, and there we go. So the chin would fall around here, the sides of the head, uh, with the ears around there. Yeah, you, you kind of get the idea. And this is this is exactly how I would lay it out normally. Um, I probably also try turn peel off. I probably also try 
using relax in here. Yes, there is a relax in here as well. And believe me, this is a lifesaver sometimes. Um, if you go in, change that from edge to face angles. You can see that it cleans it up a little bit just by pressing start relax. This will be extremely useful in, in the next little tutorial I'm doing with the laptop. Um, you know, this will come in useful. So, yeah, it looks a bit like a sweetie, but meh, it'll do. That's a nice clean one. Okay, I've got nothing to demonstrate that really. Um, so, instead, what I'll do is if I go to the material editor, go into diffuse, I use just a checker map, apply that. Okay, and if I make it smaller, and this is really what checker maps are for, it's just checking that things look okay. And if you haven't got a texture quite yet, if I make that a bit bigger, actually, those checkers should look mostly square, except obviously around the seams there'll be problems, but for the most part they should look relatively square and relatively smooth, and they do for the most part, so, as I said, around the seams they're a little bit messy, but that's fine, that's all good, and that can't be avoided, it can be reduced but not avoided. So that would be that. Collapse that. And of course the torus, the last one. So in peel. That's the last one I'll go over. Okay, I'm gonna reset the peel at this point. Let's have a look first. Okay, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Reset the peel. And this is where I'm gonna introduce something else as well. So if I select say the bottom here. Right, in here, uh, it's not in here, it's up here, right, we have loop x and y edges, okay, and ring as well, x and y edges. If you use loop with one selected, it will select around, so it's just like holding, uh, you know, selecting one, holding shift, it will select all the way around, all the way around. but it doesn't work in UVs, um, so you have to use this instead. Um, but that's fine, yeah, all works. So if we do this one as well, this will give us our vertical split. Okay, pretty much there, yeah. Convert that to seam, peel, and there is a slight issue there, isn't there? It's converted it, but it doesn't quite like it. Why doesn't it like it? I'm betting it probably does like it. It's just been a little bit fussy. And if it's been fussy, the best way to solve that is relax. If it doesn't look like it's doing anything, try and relax it. So face angles. There you go. You can see actually this is a really good demonstration of it. So keep going, be persistent. See it's slowly getting there, slowly. Come on. You can do it. It'll make it. Come on! It's almost there. It's a great tool, though. It's a great tool for sort of cleaning up your UVs if they've got a little bit messy. Come on. Oh, God. It's almost tempted to pause the video then. I think we've made it though. Yeah, we have, yeah. Okay, so that smooths it out. I believe as well, I mean, sometimes edge angles is better. From my experience, face angles always works better, but edge angles might actually do something a little bit better. Yeah, it's kind of straightened it out a bit more, so it's probably worth, you know, trying it out. Um, but generally speaking, I find face angles to be one of the best ones to use. Okay, so that's all sorted, that's all done. Now there's loads more settings in here that I need to go through with you, and it's going to take an awful lot of time, but um, you know, as we progress through the projects, um, we'll go over more and more and more of this, okay? But if you can get your head around Peel, that's a very, very good start. Um, you know, and it'll be uh, your first step towards creating your own textures, which is what's important. Okay, so 
that concludes this first tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, I'll be getting you to uh, map out. To I'll, I'll give you an existing text, and I'll be getting you to map out using PL method. Okay. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.